Good afternoon. Today we are invited out to the Central Florida Wildlife Reserve, which is actually a place that we went in March of last year to see a bunch of big cats. And we're going today in celebration of the release of Lion King on DVD. I'm excited to see if anything has changed, if they've gotten any new cats, and to say hello to the cats that we saw last year. I don't know, big cats are fun, and I like going places where we can see them up close and learn about them. So. Let's head on out. You guys know we love a good video that starts out on a road like this with nobody else on it in the middle of nowhere, Florida. Here we go. We've made it to the Central Florida Animal Reserve and we're excited. We're going to go do a tour and we get to see some of their big cats. Of course, all the big cats will be in habitats and we won't be getting in with them, but we should get some pretty good looks at them and we'll be able to see some lions in celebration of the Lion King. They have some cooler containers here that contain all of the meat that they serve to the cats every day that they upcycled from shipping container ships and they told us that at any point in time they have between two and six tons of meat on property and the cats can eat up to 200 pounds a day, like split amongst all the cats. Oh, we get to see our first big cat. And that's, that's Ralph. So Ralph's story is actually pretty interesting. He started out as what's called a photo cub. So in the state of Florida, between the weight of zero and 25 pounds, a tiger can be handed off to somebody, anybody, and they can take a photo with it. Like it can be a photo op opportunity where people can charge you to take your picture with a tiger cub. And then between the weight of 25 to 45, they can still be out and about meeting people, but they have to be on the lead that is handled by a licensed trainer. And then after 45 pounds, they cannot be handled by anybody other than a licensed trainer. So in the money-making industry around big cats, at the weight of 45, they can no longer make money. So they're often handed off to rescue organizations like this one, where they live out the rest of their lives here under the loving care of Central Florida Animal Reserve. So just to give you guys an idea, I asked, how much does Ralph weigh now? 478 pounds. This is Masokola. Fun fact, his name means little brother. He's a Siberian tiger. He is very large, just for perspective. His tail circumference is about the same circumference as my calf. That's a big tiger. So from this distance, you all actually get a chance to engage in a little bit of tiger language. Because they see you, you see them, they actually will communicate an awful lot. Uh, in fact, they've been communicating with you guys ever since you got here. But it's a combination of a lot of different micro expressions. It's the jaw that is relaxed. It's the position of the whiskers. It's how slow they blink with their eyes. Whether they're yawning or not. Or rolling onto their back like chargers. <laughs> also the ears. Uh, interested, not necessarily canted forward like he was trying to punch you guys. All of that together says, eh, I'm pretty comfortable here. And now that Masokola is standing up, you can really see how big this tiger is. Holy cow, that is a gigantic tiger. Wow. The cats will eat anywhere between 2 and 10 pounds, depending on their speciation size, etc. But we know that the amount that they can eat in the wild is obviously much different than what we are going to feed them on a regular basis. So the cougars, smallest of the cats, they can eat upwards of 15 to 20 pounds in a sitting if they really wanted to. Same thing with the leopards. They can probably get to about 30 pounds or so. Lions in the wild have been demonstrated to eat about 50 pounds in a sitting in a true gorge. And tigers, the record for a tiger is about 75 pounds of meat in one sitting. Now, after they do something like that, then basically they're gonna roll over on their back and not move for about five days because they'll just have a giant food baby and just digest. I wanna introduce you to Wynn. This is the first of the white tigers that you probably will see today. She is here with Michael, who is also being a ham in the corner there too. Now, a lot of people see the white tiger and think that they are seeing they're a different species, but they are not. They are part of the Bengal bloodline. And as part of the Bengal bloodline, all of them originate from the original one found in the 1950s. Hi, little girl. <laughs> um, the uh, Maharaja of Rewa had found the white tiger cub in the 50s, brought that cub into captivity, and started all of the breeding of the white tigers that we know today. But the only way to get the white tiger back then was for it to be a gift of state, and the Indian government controlled that. The United States got our first white tiger in 1960, and the start of white tiger fever was born. In fact, every institution wanted to have the white tiger. It was a big breeding program. It was considered very prestigious at the time to have the white tiger. Now, a lot of that started to change throughout the late 60s and 70s as entertainment started to come more into the picture, whereby people started to see them in magic acts and in various shows. And the entertainment component did amazing things in terms of being able to raise awareness about the cats in general, but they also 
were primarily responsible for the fantasies that surrounded big cats. The idea of them being just giant house cats and pets and things along those lines. That fantasy drove what eventually became a very large pet industry of people trying to breed for the white tigers so that they could get them into the public markets. At the time, you could get a white tiger, it would cost you five to seven thousand dollars to get a white tiger cub. But all of that really came to a bit of a crashing halt in 2003 after the big accident that took place with uh, Siegfried and Roy. And a lot of new rules were instituted, not only with regards to contact, but with regards to who could have them and, and where they could be. So there was a huge crisis where there were lots of white tigers being born that had no homes. And that is primarily how we ended up with so many white tigers. At our max, at one point, we had 17 white tigers that we were taking care of simply because of that. One of the fun facts that they told us about tigers is that their stripes go down to their skin. So if you were to shave a tiger down, then they would have the stripes still on their skin, almost like a tiger stripe tattoo. And another thing about white tigers is that they are not albino, they're leucistic. So the difference is albino tigers would have pink eyes, whereas these guys have blue eyes and pink paws, which I can't, oh, there's a pink paw right there, as opposed to the other tigers that have amber colored eyes and dark paws. Hey buddy, what's going on? I'm leaving now. See you later. It was nice to talk to you. So I wanted to show you guys this ball that's in the enclosure right there because he has an example of a ball that has been used up out for us to look at. This is what the ball looks like after the cats have played with it for about four weeks. And you can kind of see how thick the plastic is. They have demolished this. And these are specifically made for big cats by a company that makes toys for big cats. He was telling us that tigers are very aquatic animals. As a matter of fact, they have webbed feet. And if they are swimming, their paws spread out and the webbing makes it so that they have a nine by nine, nine inches by nine inches of surface area on their paw to help them swim. Fun fact, not only about big cats, but any cat, they have whiskers. So the whiskers are about the size of their head and they use that as a size gauge. So the head on this cat is the biggest part of its body. If it feels that its whiskers get touched when it's trying to put its head inside of a hole, it knows that its head would get stuck in there so it won't stick it any further in. So this is Eo and Eo is actually the mascot here here at Central Florida Animal Reserve. So all the markings on his face are the same as this picture here on their sign. Can you guys see it? Oh, thank you for showing me though. Here's Cody. Cody's about five years old. He said about, about one out of every five cubs makes it to adulthood because they might get kicked out of the pride. One thing that is interesting, and I'm gonna draw this to a difference between say the Lion King and uh, what you might see in real lions, is that even though there may be two males in a coalition, they are not always equals in that kind of Mufasa scar kind of way. However, it does become very important that they do band together for outside threats. Because if they don't, then a larger coalition will come and take over. But it's very rare to have a single male lion be the be all and end all king of an entire Pride. Prides have gotten a lot larger in recent years. When I first started research with lions way back in the 90s, there were a couple of single male prides that were out there. Now most coalitions will be three to five males that will all be together. And it's just because life is just that difficult. And something that's really cool about lion manes is that research has shown that the females have a preference. They like lions with dark manes. So that actually is a bit reversed from the movie, for example. Mufasa would have been on the bottom of the totem pole because dark manes are where it's at. Dark manes demonstrate that a lion is older, that they have been around longer, that they are uh, more fit. Uh, and so it is fully possible to have a, a lion with a dark mane um, who would be preferred by the females. This is Cola. She is the oldest lioness here. We the photo cub. We were in a position to be able to help her, and uh, so we had her come to us. Uh, she was actually shipped in a UPS box across the country, um, much to our chagrin. And uh, uh, it was something that uh, I think basically ended the, uh, the career for that other location. I'm being dismissed. Um, <laughs> Are you dismissing me, Kola? <laughs> she is. The queen has spoken. Lion cubs uh, make a very cute kind of ah, ah, ow, kind of noise. Um, What's that sound like? It sounds like ah, ah, ow. <laughs> That's what they sound like. Um, YouTube it. Look up lion uh, lion cub sounds. I bet you you'll hear that exact noise. And if you want a real fun uh, uh, fun moment, take the sound of an adult lion that rumbles and then speed it up and you'll get that exact same sound. You'll hear their cub voice. They said that in the wild, both of these lionesses 
probably would not still be with us. But here, actually, Cola over here is 19 years old. They said that big cats in the wild, especially lions, only live to be about 15. She is our oldest resident. She will, January 2nd, make 20 years old, uh, which is the human equivalent of being about 102. Her story starts in South Florida as a pet. She was kept inside for the first four years of her life at a facility that was breeding exotic hoofstock. The problem was that they did not generally have leopards, and then when she came of age, suddenly the hoofstock didn't want to breed anymore, which meant she had to go. She was declawed way back in an era whereby declawing was considered legal and appropriate for big cats. Fortunately, that is no longer the case. But as soon as she got outside, she had terrible, terrible allergies. So much so that she lost all the fur from the tip of her nose back down to her shoulders and was itching like crazy. Took every kind of shot, spray, cream, gel, everything in the, under the sun to try and get that under control. But it did still leave her with quite a bit of scarring left, where she still has uh, patches of areas where the fur never quite grew back. In spite of that, she has recovered beautifully. You know, that was 15 years ago. Now uh, she's still with us, uh, doing quite well. Interesting fact that he just told us, this is a leopard. There are black leopards and there are black jaguars, but there are no black panthers. And another funny thing is that there's not really a thing called a panther. We have the Florida panther, but that's just sort of a name that people call it. It's really just a cougar. So in other words, panther is just kind of a colloquial term for any medium-sized cat. The thing about cougars is that they are the largest of the big cats that can purr. And so because they could purr and they were in the Felis family, that meant that at that time you could have a cougar as a pet, as just a big cat. Now, if you've ever had cats, then you would know a lot about how cougars kind of behave. They are very much like giant domestic cats. In fact, if you're allergic to cats, then you will actually be allergic to cougars once they hit their adult dander. And in fact, a lot of interesting big cat history revolves around what happened with the cougars in the last 20 years. Cougar was born in 2005, and in 2005, the Florida panther was actually a very small and sickly species. There were only about 112 that were left, and they're getting ready to go extinct just from illness. So a radical move was actually executed, whereby they took cougars from Texas, brought them into Florida to breed with the Florida panther, gather their strength, and to make them a stronger, hardier species. This trick actually worked and the Florida Panther was saved by these interventions. However, it came with an unusual consequence. Because there had been this intermingling of genetic material, the scientific community determined that there was not sufficient genetic material to have them as their own subspecies, and did that for a whole bunch of other cougars as well. And in that process, the Florida Panther was accidentally written out of existence, and the state of Florida went nuts. As you can imagine, not only is this our state cat, but we spend the most amount of money on of any endangered species on the Florida panther, the most expensive endangered species in the country. It costs roughly about 15 to 17 million dollars per year per cougar in conservation. And we're currently tracking about 220 of them. So there you have it. That was our trip out to the Central Florida Animal Reserve to celebrate the DVD release of The Lion King. I got my lion ears on. Super educational, like I really enjoyed our trip and our time out there. I asked a lot of questions and I got to learn a lot about big cats. And if you guys wanted to take a trip out there too, it's not too far from Disney, about like 40 minutes to an hour outside of it. And we'll put a link to them in the description down below so you guys can see all about it and how much a tour costs and maybe schedule your own tour. Go out there and meet some of the cats. I had a really good time and learned a lot. So with that being said, we are off and we'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.